Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We have a jam-packed one here for you today. AMC stock is now $8.63 per share. You still made a retracement off of the lows, but you did get rejected at the 50-day moving average. Not exactly the greatest sign, but our problems seem like small problems compared to Jerome Powell. Jerome Powell dropped the F-bomb today for, I believe, the first time ever in his public speaking history. This is because he was verbally attacked again by climate protesters. Yeah, Jay Powell dropped the F-bomb on live television. We need to go ahead and get into this situation. He did make some statements that the markets did not like. You had a 30-year bond auction come out, which sent markets down as well. This has broken, I believe, the eight-day-in-a-row green streak for stocks. The last time this happened was in March of 2003. Stocks proceeded to rally about 68% over the next 12 months. We're going to get into all of that as well as your data coming out tomorrow and what could also affect our market. So we do indeed have a jam-packed video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. So we're going to start off with a little bit of a recap here. I'm sure as you guys do know, earnings were good. Okay. Earnings were spectacular, just better than expectations across the the board. You really couldn't have asked for anything better. I mean, they were very, very good. AMC had a net income of $12 million. So actually profitable for the second quarter in a row. AMC's adjusted EPS came in at a loss of nine cents. Markets were expecting a loss of 25 cents. AMC's revenue beat estimates by almost 12%, coming in higher than pre-pandemic numbers. Your Q3 2019 was less revenue than what we've seen today. Obviously, inflation is a lot different than now compared to then. So inflation adjusted, you can get into the nitty gritty. Maybe it wasn't as great as pre-pandemic numbers, but still rock solid i mean rock solid earnings even the one negative thing that was said during amc's conference call that caused amc stock to fall well that got resolved about two hours after amc's earnings call ended the hollywood strike is now over so that should have been good and we should have been setting ourselves up for a awesome day today that indeed is not the case because amc well is going to sell $350 million worth of stock. AMC is going to sell another 40 million shares, roughly, of AMC common stock at $9 per share. That would equate out to $360 million. So that's what caused the problem today. Now, we did have a bond auction that was also a bit of a problem. 30-year bond auction came in at 4.76%. Last bond auction was 4.83%. The expectation was that this bond auction was going to come in a lot lower than that. Ultimately, 30-year treasury yields were trading at about 4.65%. So your bond auction came in much higher than where yields were at. That caused yields to rocket higher today. 30-year treasury yields up almost 12 basis points, 10-year treasury yields up almost 13 basis points today. That is causing a knee-jerk reaction in the markets, causing stocks to sell off. It was not just AMC. It was it was basically anything that is risk on or even risk off kind of names. I own a stock called Abvi. They sell the number one drug in the world, Humira, as well as Botox. I, I invested in them in 2019 and continue to be invested today. I've never sold a single share because we don't really like to sell things over here. Hodel, by the dip. Obviously, those are phrases that are used quite often. We, we take those seriously. Even that stock was down almost 5% today. That's insane. Just just carnage across the board. And uh, that was mainly due to the rise in yields. Uh, again, most of it had to do with that 30-year treasury. Now, Fed Jerome Powell made some statements today. Uh, he was speaking at the IMF, the International uh, Monetary Fund, and he did say, quote, 
Powell says Fed won't hesitate to tighten more if appropriate. He also says they are not confident we've achieved a stance to hit 2% inflation. Powell then says the Fed will continue to move carefully, going on to say that the process of getting inflation to 2% has, quote, a long way to go, and that inflation has given us a few head fakes. And then the real crap show happened. Uh... As soon as Fed Jerome Powell started to speak, those were his pre-written statements. Uh, I put over here on X, climate protesters verbally attack Jerome Powell at his IMF conference. They actually like ran up to him and kind of got in his face there. And then Powell said, just close the effing door on live television. Um, And then they obviously cut off the feed because they didn't want Fed Jerome Powell like cussing all over you know live tv or whatever but uh wow the real fed jerome powell came out the box today i believe the first time ever um those those climate protesters will just not leave him alone they're at basically every event he is going to or or speaking at it's actually ridiculous now nick timmerhouse known as from a lot of people the fed's mouthpiece he says from powell The Fed funds rate is around 5.3%, and if expected one-year inflation or one-year-ahead inflation is around 3%, that implies a real rate above 2%. He says that's well above mainstream estimates of the neutral rate, and policy is probably significantly restrictive. This top comment underneath this post says this confirms a pause. Thanks, and please tell him he was a goat today. So it looks like he's basically just confirming that they don't plan to raise rates again. Federal Powell said if they need to, they will, but it's really going to take a hot CPI report next week and maybe another hot one after that, uh, you know, some really hot inflation data to uh, get another rate hike is is essentially what I'm getting out of what we heard today from Powell. Although markets didn't like it, it's kind of what we've already known, right? The algorithms didn't like what he said, but humans, I mean, that that's really didn't come to us as any big shocker. I think Powell dropping the F-bomb was a lot more of a shocker than uh, anything else. Now, the interesting flow sentiment. For AMC stock, you've seen 20 orders today worth $1.38 million with a positive order value of 29%. If you take a look at the uh, call open interest expiring by this Friday, 63.19% calls, 36.81% puts. So still, uh, you know, people are very bullish on AMC stock. Now, again, take this data with a big grain of salt. Because I don't think these numbers are correct. Maybe some of you guys do. Let me know down below in the comment section. But you do have a short interest of free flow at 6.18%. $123.39 million worth of short positions. Days to cover 0.58%. Uh, 12.23 million shares that are currently sold short. Shares out on loan, 13.74 million. Cost to borrow, 1.27%. Utilization of 31.01%. Short score of 49.42 out of 100. You do have a cost to borrow max of about 8%. Cost to borrow average of 1.5%. Cost to borrow minimum at 0.35%. I think these numbers are uh, just not accurate at all. They're, they're they're way too low. They're absolutely ridiculous if I were to say so myself, but that is obviously just my personal opinion. Now, let's get into what we can expect for tomorrow, what could move our market. So overnight tonight, you're going to get uh, some data out of Turkey. That's probably not going to move our markets at all. Uh, UK GDP growth rate year over year and quarter over quarter, as well as month over month, business investments, goods, trades, balances, manufacturing, production, construction orders, all kinds of things coming out from the UK overnight tonight. And then tomorrow morning, the ECB president Lagarde will make a speech that's going to be at 730 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fed Logan will speak at 730, Fed Bostic at 9 a.m. And then the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey coming out at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, What's really important here is your five-year inflation expectations and your one-year inflation expectations. So we have seen these come up a lot as of recently. This, for an example, is your one-year inflation expectations chart. From September, you were at 3.2%. October, you jumped to 4.2%. That was a 1% increase, by far the largest increase that we had seen because, I mean, back in April of 2023, you were at 4.6%. 
and you've really trended downwards ever since. So that big jump in inflation expectations is exactly what the Fed does not want to see. So if you see inflation expectations go up again, that's going to move up your odds of actually seeing a rate hike. Now, five-year inflation expectations are a little bit more important, and there has been a little bit more good news on that front as of lately. September, you were at 2.8%. You went up to 3%. For October 2023. I think Powell is referencing this 3% inflation expectation uh, for the next five years as, you know, really what uh, a lot of people think is your forward, like longer term inflation number. Now, you were at about 2.9% for a while over here towards the end of 2022, the beginning of 2023. You want to see that preferably fall. If you rise from here and especially go above 3.1% tomorrow, that is going to be bad news. So those are really the two things you want to be watching for. Those inflation expectations will be very, very important. And you really can't stress that enough. That's exactly what the Fed does not want to see uh, going higher because if If that goes higher, then the Fed uh, will definitely need to raise rates again, especially if if that goes higher and, you know, stays higher. Now, your yield curve is uninverting sharply. Now you're inverted 44 basis points. You recently seen an uninversion. You were only inverted 15 basis points on October 27th. That was because the 10-year Treasury yield was rising as your two-year, really, your yield around, uh, you know, Fed policy around your two-year treasury was staying at about five and a half percent where the Fed funds rate is today, five and a quarter percent, wherever it is at. And your 10 year yield was rising. At one point you were at five percent. That's when you were only inverted 15 basis points. So presumably the two year yield was at like 5.15 basis points around there. Well, now the 10 year yield, it has fallen, right? Even though you are rising today, you're still uninverting or inverting still on the yield curve, that's actually good. Once you break above this black line, once you once you start to go into a normalized yield curve or a little bit more normalized, that's when you actually need to be on recession watch. So that's important to be watching for, uh, something I have paid uh, personally very, very close attention to. Now, in all regards to AMC stock, what do I think is coming next? I, I, I think it's really hard to tell. Uh, like I said kind of previously in this video, like I've said in, in other videos now, this is like a record rally in the NASDAQ. The last time you were green this many days in a row, I believe it's like eight days in a row, was back in 2003. And specifically, after coming off of a 100-day low in which we were, and you did as well back in 2003, in March and having such a strong recovery, well, back in 2003, the NASDAQ actually ended up rallying big time, like 68% from the low. Well, technically, like, um, let's see, the be the be end of 2003 was about a 67 and a half percent rally from the low of of 2023 so a big reversal did come it was obviously choppy but you did do very well over the next 12 months if you were invested in the markets at that time so it's arguable if that's going to happen again i don't know i'm not a fortune teller but the historical precedence of that is pretty dang good now we have been going through a longer term cup and handle formation on the nasdaq it's pretty easy to see you recently broke out to the upside above this law uh, above this downtrending line of resistance that was great news but so many green days in a row you're bound to get some red days so we really want to see do we just fall back down into this kind of handle range on, on this cup and handle or do we continue higher from here i think a lot of that's going to come down to the data that we get tomorrow other Fed speakers, as well as those, especially those inflation numbers next week. If inflation does take a big move down, then I think you can be a lot more bullish on AMC. Now, AMC, considering they're going to dilute shareholders, I think it makes it a little bit more precarious. Do investors look at this as, hey, good news. AMC is now profitable two quarters in a row. They can dilute shareholders, and it's not a huge deal because they're not losing $100, $200 million every quarter. Or do they look at this like, hey, more dilution and more dilution to come. We should just sell AMC. Well, since th- <laughs> since this guy just uh, took it upon himself to not let me make any more video, uh, yeah, he's going to have to go ahead and wrap this one up. So you guys go ahead. Me, Emerson. He's usually a pretty good baby.
little cries here and there throughout the videos, but that's okay. So nonetheless, guys, again, I don't know what to expect here. I don't know the course of the markets. It seems like we probably get some sideways trading action, maybe some downwards trading action for our markets. And I don't think that necessarily translates into a bullish AMC. Now, what we've seen at one point today was AMC did recover quite a bit from the lows. So that was a pretty good sign. If you look at the RSI, that is at 39.78. You're on the oversold side. The RSI, the MACD is still slightly bullish. So, I mean, there are a couple different things going for us. And again, what is the narrative that, that ultimately wins out here? Is it... AMC is now profitable two quarters in a row. Maybe it's not a big deal. They dilute shareholders or is it just dilution, dilution, dilution? I don't know. I think it takes a couple days to try to figure this one out. AMC stock is down one and a half percent in after hours. Not a big shocker. NASDAQ slightly down in after hours following the just crap show we, we got with Fed Jerome Powell today. That doesn't surprise me all too much. I am tactically bullish from here, though. Uh, on the markets throughout the rest of the year, as long as inflation does not rocket back up or something crazy happens, a black swan event, uh, I, I, I don't think there's a huge reason right now to be really bearish on our market. So that makes me be a little bit more bullish on AMC. But again, if we bounce tomorrow, that's going to be great. If you have another big down day, that's obviously not going to be so great. So I wish I had a stronger opinion here. Um, if I were to lean, obviously, I, I'm, I'm a pretty optimistic person, so I would like to lean bullish, but I, it's it's hard to say at this point. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.